G'day guys, hope you're all doing well. It has been a while since I've filmed anything or talked to the camera or anything like that, so I do apologize, but this week where I'm basically gonna give you a bit of an update on where I'm at, what I've been up to, a bit of an update of the car, because there's a couple of things changing, and what the plan is going forward from here. So, I'm in Darwin at the moment. I finished my job in Darwin three weeks ago. That was awesome, such a cool job, awesome company, great people, absolutely loved it. And Darwin itself has been sick to live in. Then I flew out to the Wit Sundays to work on a super yacht <laughs> for two weeks. I worked on the super yacht, oh, 10 days. I couldn't film much because of confidentiality stuff. Um, and to be honest, when I, I, like, I worked nine to five, um, and then outside of those times, I didn't actually do that much because you, you're a little bit restricted with what you can do. Um, so I didn't film much, but that's all right. So we're back in Darwin. I've been here for a week now, doing odd jobs, ordering things and whatnot for the car. And they've finally almost all arrived. So we're gonna start with having a look at what's come. Uh, we've got number plates. So they're the number plates. We've got three boxes. That's my new Airbag Man airbag suspension, which I'm super excited for because old has has got a bit of a saggy bum at the moment because there's an extra 60 kilos on the roof, which is my new rooftop tent, um, which is awesome. So I finally pulled the, pulled the trigger on that and decided to go with it. So I'll walk you through that. I didn't film me installing that because it's super duper easy. Cool. So let's have a look at this number plate to start with. Dad's been having me on. Dad's the one that went and sorted it out and has been saying that he got some interesting plates. And he, he lied, he's <laughs> such a, such a dick. They're just normal number plates, which I'm semi disappointed about, but semi really happy about. So I put them on and then I'll legally be able to drive around Darwin again. Woo! And be able to make it into Western Australia, which is where I'm going next. Oh, what a segue. So, next job is in Albany, Western Australia. For those of you who don't know, that is down the very, very south corner of Western Australia. Today's date is the 11th of October and I start work on the 25th of November. So that gives me kind of six, seven weeks to get down there. Alrighty, so I've just taken all of the airbag stuff out of uh, the various boxes. So I got these through Airbag Man, Airbag Man suspension. But this is what we're looking at. So there's these two, uh, which are the actual airbag units. Um, they basically sit in the middle of your leaf spring. I'll show you what that means. Then we've got mounting, bracketing, yada, yada, yada. All the nuts, bolts that you could ever want. Some zip ties for the tubing. Um, no idea what these are for, but I guess we'll find out. And then we've got instructions and whatnot, a sticker that'll go in the car and all the fun things you could ever wish for. Alrighty, here's Haz. So you can see, just sitting there, and you probably, you might have noticed in other videos, she's got a bit of a saggy bottom because of this big heavy thing on the back. Um, so, oh, let's get under the car and I'll show you what we're looking at. Oh. So, this is the suspension here. In utes, they use what's called leaf suspension, which is basically these long um, bars which are kind of shaped like a bit of a curve, so they, they act as a spring. And then traditionally, cars come with this part here, which is called a bump stop, which is just a firm rubber fitting that basically just kind of acts as an end point. What we're gonna be doing with the airbag suspension is swapping that for a nice uh, marshmallowy, cushiony thing. So the first step is to fit these little elbow fittings into the actual airbag itself. Spin until the O-ring's in contact and then go an extra one, uh, three quarters of a turn. So that's nearly half a turn. And there's three quarters. Beautiful. And then you just spin that to that. And then repeat with the other side. Alrighty, so the next step is to put on the, what do they call it, the upper bracket. So one of these things, uh, which is what is going to kind of bolt onto the, one of the things that's going to bolt onto the chassis of the car. Um, I know 
Alrighty, good morning team. Hope you're going well. Uh, it's the next day today. Oh, hello. This is Indy. Indy, get out of the way. <laughs> Come on, go. Go somewhere, go chase a stick. Over there. Um, so, I've just jacked the car up. So you can see, um, just so that the diff is supported so that when I undo the suspension doesn't drop. Let's get going. <laughs> just to give you a reference of what a breaker bar is, this is a breaker bar. <laughs> this is a normal socket. <laughs> so we've got some big nuts to undo, I'll show you. These four nuts here one two three four which is what holds the normal suspension on we have to take off well not take all the way off we just have to loosen it that's the old bump stop seems like it's going okay at this point <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see how much I'm sweating already, but anyway, decided to take the tire off, make it e easier for me and gives a bit of a better view. So this is where this is going to be going in. All going to plan. Yeah. How good. Alrighty, so I've just done what has so far been the hardest bit. It's putting this little locking plate in. You can see it just here. It basically goes through this little groove, but just required a lot of fan dangling to get her in. But she's in now, uh, so I've just got two more bolts in, and then this side's done, I think. Time to get the breaker bar out and do the bottom U-bolts up. So as you can imagine, these bottom U-bolts are really, really important. So I'll do them up as tight as I can now, but I'm going to check them um, when I'm on the road. Just because if these come undone, we're in all sorts of trouble. Alrighty guys, that's one. Woo! Do the other side, I won't film any other side because it's there. And then we gotta do the tubing. And then we're good. Wasn't too bad, all in all. I'm gonna put this on charger because I've only got 3%. Alrighty guys, we are nearly there. I've just mounted the little uh, um, bracket, valve bracket, um, with a couple of spare bolts tucked up under there. I figured um, tuck it up out of the way and then if I back in or when I back into things, um, it won't get damaged. So just gotta pop these bad boys in there and then do the plumbing and it's done. It's been, it's probably been as hard as I thought it was gonna be. About, about as difficult as I imagined, um, which is good. Didn't make too many mistakes. I did have to take the left one off again, um, adjust one bolt and then put it back on. But. We're all in, how good. So you can see there, that's where the air goes in and then it goes along these pipes. Um, just when you put the pipes in, you obviously want to stay clear of anything sharp, anything hot, 
So I had to do a bit of a loop-de-loop -loop to avoid the exhaust because um, it'll obviously just melt the pipe and then you've got to get a new pipe. Alrighty, she's up. Inflated nicely, as you can see in the video. Actually looks heaps better. Like, you can see at the, <laughs> this wheel arch, how much more, um, it does go up. Like the wheel was never gonna contact that, but before that was sitting at the tire. Um, so it should be heaps more level. This isn't quite level ground. This is on a little bit of a slope like that, so. Um, but yeah, stoked. Wasn't too hard. I just want to check for leaks now and then I'm done. Yo. Welcome back to another day. So I bought this big old map book because I got sick of buying lots of little ones. The little ones are like $15 each. Like the little fold out ones that show you the whole state. And this thing costs 30 bucks and it's got them all in there. So, so what I'm going to do is show you firstly the whole of WA where I'm going to be going and then what I'm thinking for the northern section um, in between kind of Kununurra and Broome. But I'll show you what that all means because that's probably gibberish. Okay, so here's WA. Um, first thing you gotta know is it is a huge state. Think Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland all combined. It is massive. So we're starting up, you can't actually see down in here, but we're up here. Um, I'm basically gonna drive to Kununurra pretty quickly um, and not do too much along the way. And then in Kununurra, we're then gonna be driving from there all the way down to Albany, which is there. So we gotta go from the top to the bottom in true Robo style. Long way. Um, but we've got plenty of time to do it. So I'll show you the northern section, what I'm thinking for that. Okay, so here we are zoomed into the north. That's Broome. That's Kununurra. Now there's two kind of options. You can take this road, which is called the Gibb River Road, which some of you may have heard of, which has got a lot of cattle stations, like huge cattle, sta cattle stations and waterfalls, swimming holes, all that kind of thing along the way, which is great, but because we're now mid-October, a lot of them are closed. The road's not that great and it's really, really hot. So what I'm actually thinking I'm gonna do is take the lazy option, take the highway down, stop in here, which is the Bungle Bungles or Pernulu National Park, which meant to be really cool. Stop at Lake Argyle for a bit uh, and then keep coming down through Fitzroy's Crossing where I'll have a go for some Barramundi and then take this little road up back to the Gibb and then across the Broom. And along here, there's a couple of things to see, um, which will be good. So that's the plan, Stan, and we'll just see how it all goes. Hmm. The last two upgrades are the rooftop tent. Now I got a Drifter Stockton rooftop tent. Um, it is the 1.4 model, so it's 1.4 meters wide, two and a bit meters long. Um, the reason I got this one is because it's kind of the lightest on the market that has roof racks that I don't have to take my board and kayak off when I open it up. So the gas struts, um, which are in the front and back, are strong enough to hold the tent open with that kind of thing on the roof. It wasn't cheap, <laughs> I won't lie. Um, but I think it's gonna be well worth it. Really, really easy to mount. It just comes with these little um, saddle mounts that you literally, it comes with these wing nuts and then I just put a, an eyelock nut over the top, sorry, to hold it in place. And it makes it a bit harder to steal too um, because you need an actual tool. The next new toy is the kayak. Just a, a Seek Rapid uh, 2.7 meter kayak that I got from Anaconda. Bit of a cheapie, but should be really good. I've, I'm thinking that'll be awesome to access kind of the fringing reef down the west coast um, and any inland lakes or anything like that that I got near, like Lake, Lake Argyle, for example. Um, oh yeah, and a new awning. So when I got the rooftop tent, which I didn't even know, there was actually a promotion on which means that I got a, a $300 kind of voucher to spend with Drifter Stockton. Um, so I bought 
an awning, a new awning and a couple of little like compartmentalizers for the kitchen. That's all the new stuff. Alrighty, well guys, I'm gonna leave it there for this week because that's a lot of information. Um, the next episode will be on the road. Not sure where we're gonna go first yet, but I will certainly let you know. And yeah, we'll kick on. Phew. Have a good one.